Hey guys, I was going to try to do a sneaker video today. I was going to do a Birkenstock review. And it's uh, it's a little hard to concentrate on, on kind of anything meaningful uh, outside of the fact that there's raids all over the United States. Uh, I live in New York City where there's a lot of protests, lots of violence and looting and everything else going on um, all throughout the nation. And it's alarming. Um, but, you know, there's, there's about a thousand other people commenting on, on practically all aspects of what's happening in America right now. It's, uh, it's a really tough time, uh, whether or not you're, you're unemployed, whether or not you are fighting the coronavirus in a hospital, whether or not you're a black person just trying to live a normal life without being ridiculed for being black. It's, uh, it's a really, really odd time, and so... I want to speak specifically about one aspect of, of this time period that I find irritating, almost frustrating, and honestly, it really does make me angry. And I'm just going to say it, that, that Asian Americans, to me, are failing what needs to be happening today. And the reason I thought about this and why... I'm speaking about this is is I was at one of the protests in Union Square before it got wild, before it got crazy. Uh, there were a lot of peaceful, amazing people of all ages, of all races, except for one. Asians. Um, and, and I don't really care if you're Chinese or Indian, South Asian, whatever. There just weren't many people there that were of other colors besides black and white. Uh, but speaking as part of the Asian American community, what makes me super angry about, about our role in this is, you know, no more than a month ago, Asian Americans were speaking about and trying to get on the air about the injustices, about being ridiculed for, for having coronavirus or starting coronavirus, which was obviously baseless in so many ways. Uh, even my own friends who are Asian Americans or just Asians in general, were afraid to walk outside the door because they were getting weird, weird stares for having masks on in elevators. Um, you know, my, my initial response is back to them being the 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 the, uh, the devil's advocate was imagine how black people feel, uh, and, and they feel like that all the time. This was obviously before all this this outbreak happened, and you know they were so vocal about their fear of of whites and whoever else looking at them differently and almost completely and utterly silent when it came down to the protests that were happening uh, in New York City. And I'm, I'm, I, hopefully in LA and other places it's a little better. I'm not sure I wasn't there. There's an outrage in me in, in knowing that like this community of blacks that were marginalized since basically since they were forced into America, you have another group that was just marginalized just a little bit and unwilling to really speak up with their voices. And it, it really is starting to bother me. So before I start really talking about modern day society, I want to take a little history lesson backwards about 50, forward about 40, 50 years ago when the civil rights movement was happening. In 1964, the Civil Rights Act was signed into place to hopefully give blacks a better footing into society. Um, it's obviously been 40, 50 years later. And while there has been significant progress, you know, we don't have Jim Crow laws anymore. We don't have segregation in, in, in churches and, and restaurants and public places. There's still a lot to be done. And why this is so important for Asian Americans specifically is 1964 led to another act in 1965 called the Immigration Act of 1965. And uh, that was what allowed a lot of the laws that were passed in the 1920s for Asians to finally immigrate into America and have a lot of their dreams come true. Uh, it is during this time period that the blacks in America risking their lives the same way they're doing today, probably even more so because, you know, at least like now we have whites pretty much fighting for, for, for blacks. We have other races fighting for blacks. Uh, they, they had no platform and so this was a huge deal and this is what led to the first generation and second generation, potentially even third generation of Asian Americans today. So let's pay homage to the history between blacks and Asians. Uh, despite there not being a, an actual link, it was because of the policy changes that happened that allowed for a lot of us to even exist in society today, for us to even become part of 
the, the, the American melting pot. So one of the things I want to make sure people understand is I'm not trying to change this into an Asian subject. I don't care about Asian racism because honestly, I don't think it's that bad. When it comes down to it, I want the messaging to be that there are blacks in America that have been suffering since the time that they've gotten here or since they were forced here into America until this modern day they can't do normal things that Americans want to do. I will not start to even think about how I understand how a black person feels when honestly, when I, I grew up during a time period where yes, there, there was harassment. Ching Chong Ching Chong was not something as racist as it was before, uh, as it was before as it is today. All I'm trying to say is we need to support Black Lives Matter. I don't care how you do it. The only thing that I do not want you to do is inaction and even easier, silence. Look, you can donate, you can protest, you can write letters, you can call people, whatever that is. You can educate your parents and your grandparents about what's happening in society and why it happens and why it's so important. Secondly, please don't say silent. Whether it's through social media means, whether or not it's talking to friends, whether or not it's on Zooms, whatever it is, retweet something. I don't give a shit. Just go do something. Just don't stay silent. I think I'm really sick of this rhetoric of, of Asians being safe um, and because they don't want to speak their mind, they don't want to cause riots, they don't want to cause ruckus. And without this ruckus, nothing changes. I know it's not your fight because it's, it's not you that's being affected, but it disgusts me the fact that people a month ago who were complaining about how they felt racism against them are not helping black Americans get onto equal footing in this time period. You know, it's, it's, it's not just these, these three or four days that I'm speaking about. I don't really give a shit about honestly the last month. I mean, like this all started 40 years ago. I hope it's 40 years ago. I don't have my math wrong uh, with Trayvon Martin and a bunch of others. And then before that with, with Martin Luther King and many others there. Um, and then before that, the time of slavery. If doing these things makes you feel uncomfortable, you're probably doing something right. It's not easy. It's supposed to feel weird. Now, I'm sure many of you guys are thinking, this is not my fight. It's uncomfortable. It's not something I'm used to. It's not something that I was born or raised or taught to do as a, as a child, as an adult. It's not part of my culture. But I'm here to say that none of that matters. And, and one of the biggest things, I don't remember when or how I heard this quote, but I think it speaks volumes today and, and why it's so important for the Asian community to speak up. I want to read you guys a quote. Uh, it's post-World War II. And this was actually uh, done by German academics that were apologists for all the things that happened during World War II. But I think it's really, really relevant to today. And here's a quote. They came first with the communists. And I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a trade unionist. Then they came for the Catholics, and I didn't speak up because I was a Protestant. Then they came for me. And by that time, no one was left to speak. I think that really sums everything up in terms of what I'm trying to say succinctly. You know, the pros in there is, is simple, right? It, it, it's not your problem until it is. And for all the people that are silent, for all the people that are not doing things, I just want to ask you, what are you going to do when they come for you?